Eric from TI here, and today we're going to explore Pangea and continental drift. Uh, so the question is, is were all of the continents, you know, North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia, Antarctica, were all of these continents joined together in one big supercontinent? And if so, what evidence do we have to support that idea? And so how do scientists support their theories and hypotheses around this idea of, of Pangea? Uh, and in, in the early 1900s, there was such a scientist named Alfred Wegener, uh, who was a German meteorologist who proposed the theory of continental drift uh, in which the supercontinent known as Pangea would split, up, uh, split apart into sort of today's continents that you see today. So at one time, the idea is that North America, South America, Africa, Europe, um, all of these continents were sort of uh, coalesced into one big supercontinent. And then through time and, and um, sort of geological activity, the continents uh, broke apart and, and formed today's continents, which means that those continents must move. And so we're going to look today, uh, try to figure out if we can piece together what Pangea may have looked like through an interactive simulation of puzzle. So some of the evidence that we have to support this notion of Pangea, the supercontinent, are through fossil evidence, rock strata, which is sort of different layers um, of rock and, and sediment and how those match up to other continents' rock strata. The orientation of ancient glacial grooves, uh, mountain range locations, and satellite measurements of continental movements. So we can see these things happening very slowly over, over time. <clears throat> so they're all used to support the idea, the theory of continental drift. However, one of the first pieces of evidence that supported the theory was the observation that South America and Africa fit together like puzzle pieces. Uh, so if you look here, you'll notice that the, uh, the east, the north and east coasts of South America look like they'll fit pretty well into the west coast of Africa. And in and, and a little while, we'll be able to mess with that and, and see, you know, see how they fit together. So uh, that's what we're going to do today. I, I look forward to it. If you want to follow along with the video and maybe take notes, uh, that's absolutely fine. If you want to download the software and download this activity and do it on your own, you can do that as well. Uh, you can do that by going to our website at www.education.ti.com and download the software titled TI Inspire CX Premium Software. And this file, the file name is uh, Pangea Continent Puzzle. It can be found at the website called uh, www.scienceinspired.com. All right, with that, let's get started. All right, so I have the file Pangea Continent Puzzle opened up in the TI Inspire CX Premium software. Uh, you can use this file uh, with the software or you can use it with a TI Inspire CX or CX2 graphing calculator. It'll work on the calculator or the software, um, so it's up to you. So page 1.2 uh, talks about some of the evidence that we use to figure out uh, this, this idea of Pangea and content, continental movement uh, and this, to support this theory of continental drift. Uh, so it's things like fossil evidence. So finding the same kinds of fossils on different continents, um, you know, that, that's a bit unusual, right? So, so uh, you know, we can use that as, as evidence to say, hey, you know what, maybe these continents at one point in time were connected. Uh, rock strata, like I described in the opening of this video, uh, orientation of ancient glacial grooves. So these huge um, walls of ice cutting through the landscape, uh, we can kind of match some of the uh, patterns that are left behind uh, of these glacial grooves to, to figure out if they, they were once on, on the same continent. Mountain range locations and uh, more recently, uh, obviously, satellite measurements of continental movement, they can track that year after year. Uh, which is really interesting as well. And so all of these kinds of uh, things support the theory of continental drift. However, one of the first pieces of evidence that supported this, this, this idea, you know, a um, hundred years, a little more than a hundred years ago is this idea that uh, South America and Africa look like they fit together like puzzle pieces. And we're going to try that out today. We're going to take a look. So you can see in this image um, how South America has sort of this triangular shape. And then on the uh, western side of Africa, it looks like you can almost put those things together. And so that's what really got people thinking that, hey, you know what, maybe those continents were connected at one time. Uh, so page 1.3, question one, what evidence can be used to support the theory of continental drift? So uh, select all that apply, which usually indicates there might be more than one answer. Uh, fossil types and locations, 
rock types and locations, mountain range locations, scrape marks from ancient glaciers. And so all of these are actually um, uh, little bits of evidence that we can use to support the, uh, the notion that um, uh, the continents are drifting uh, apart and, and at one time they were all part of the, uh, the same supercontinent known as Pangaea. All right, question, uh, whoops, almost I skipped one here. Here we go, here's our simulation. This is sort of the star of the show. I don't wanna skip it. Uh, the directions, basically what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna click and drag all of the continents to try to make uh, um, a supercontinent. We're gonna try to put them all together the best we can. Uh, and so there's the ability to move the continents and then also rotate the continents to try to piece them together. And so I'm gonna do this uh, for you. If you're using the software or graphing calculator, you can do this on your own. Um, and you know, just think about uh, if the pieces don't fit precisely together, think about why that might be. And we're gonna get, get to that topic here in a little while. Okay, so we have uh, North and South America here, uh, Europe, Europe, Asia, India, Africa, Antarctica, and Australia. And so right now I have the move um, selected, but you can also rotate. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to leave Africa alone. We're going to use Africa as sort of our point of uh, rotation. And we're going to move the rest of the continents to try to fit. And so I'm going to start with South America because it's the one that, that seems to be the most obvious. I want to move South America over here. It looks like I need to rotate a bit. So I'm going to click rotate. And uh, we're going to rotate. Oops, I got to select it. Here we go. And we'll rotate South America. A little bit see if we can match it up here maybe i need to back that off a little bit and i need to switch over to move and let's put south america right i'm gonna put it right there okay and we can adjust as needed now to me it looks like um almost looks like antarctica could be uh, put in here so let me try to rotate antarctica i gotta select it again I'm going to rotate it uh, differently. All right, and then I'm going to move it back over. All right, looks like I rotated too much, but hopefully you, you get the idea of, of what we're trying to do here. And it almost looks like I could take Australia and sort of squeeze Australia in here. Uh, let me rotate it. I need to go this way. Nope, I got to select Australia first. There we go. Let's see if that'll work. The Australia sort of fits there. Um, and then uh, what about North America? What can we do with that, if anything? I wonder if North America is going to fit here somehow. I don't know. Maybe. And then Greenland. Oh, I wonder if Greenland will fit in here. Or maybe there, maybe here, let's try here. All right, well, let's, uh, we can always come back to this model and, and revise it based on information that we, we might learn here through the activity. So I'm on question two, what characteristic did you find most useful in determining how to arrange the continents? Is it A, color of the continents, B, shape of the coastlines, C, uh, size of the continents, or the locations of the continents. So, uh, you know, think about this question. You can pause the video if you want to try to come up with the answer. Um, so I'll give you a moment to do that. All right, and if uh, you didn't pause it or you did pause it and you're back, welcome back. Uh, the answer here is the shape of the coastlines. So if we go back up here, remember uh, the South American coastline and African coastline those were the first sorts of observations folks made um, a while back ago to, uh, to realize that, the, hey, th these continents may have been connected at one time. Okay, uh, question three, which two continents have the best matching coastlines? Now, you know, we could have a debate here, um, but majority of folks would agree that uh, South America and Africa match up pretty nicely. And again, that was the, uh, those two continents were the ones that got folks thinking about this as being a, a possibility in the first place. Okay. 
All right, which two continents have the coastlines that match the least? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, um, I think we could have a, a pretty good debate about this. You know, I, I think you could say, you know, maybe Australia doesn't really belong here. Maybe Australia belongs up there. Um, you know, so, so we could talk through that uh, and, and have a discussion around that. But for the most part, um, I, I think the, the better question is which two continents have the best matching coastline. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the way to think about this. All right, so now I'm going to go through some uh, slides, uh, some scenarios here about evidence of Pangaea. Um, and then we're going to go come back to our map here, and we're going to make some adjustments based, based on these scenarios uh, that I have here in this slide. So we're going to run through scenarios A through G, and then we're going to learn from these and then go back to our model and, and make adjustments. So the first one is, Geologist Alexander Dutois observed that rock layers on the western coast of Africa were almost identical to a sequence of rock layers on the eastern coast of South America. Uh, now, I think we, we've done a good job of, of uh, capturing the South America and African um, connection there. So I think uh, scenario A, I think we're in good shape. I think we have it covered. Uh, what about scenario B? The Indian continent has fossils in common with the Horn of Africa which is basically the country of Somalia in Africa. You'll see that here in a second. And the northern half of Antarctica. Okay, so the Indian continent has fossils in common with the Horn of Africa. So there, this is a clue that maybe India and the Horn of Africa uh, and the northern half of Antarctica may have uh, had some contact. So let's take a look at those three areas. So here's the Horn of Africa right here. This is the country of Somalia. Um, Antarctica is over here and India is right there so hmm so in order for this to work we may have to just kind of put Australia over to the side for a moment and uh, pull in India and I don't know how to orient India but uh, let's go ahead and rotate India a little bit so it's making better contact with uh, Africa and need to move India over here Sorry, India. All right, and then Antarctica. Maybe we, perhaps we should, we should move Antarctica as well. Uh, let's move Antarctica over here. All right, which leaves a bit of a gap. I think uh, Antarctica fit nicely there. But uh, let's keep reading the clues. Maybe this isn't correct. Um, but we'll we'll check out some more clues. This is kind of like putting a puzzle together with uh, with clues. We have to just keep looking and trying to find more information to better our model. And that's what's happening right now. All right, uh, letter C. Um, oops, I'm on the wrong one there. Let me go over here. There we go. Antarctica and Australia have fossils in common with Africa and South America. So Antarctica and Australia are likely in contact with either or both Africa and South America. So let's go check out that. See if that's what we have. So Australia, Antarctica. Now see we had Antarctica over here at one time. It really looks like it fits nicely there. And it said that there was some contact with, with Australia, which I think we did a good job of. So maybe that was the right model. And now we just have India. Maybe India sort of fits down here like that. Don't know. We'll have to come back to it and see. D, when the orientations of grooves formed by large glaciers are aligned, an ancient ice sheet expanding outward in all directions is formed across Africa, South America, Australia, Antarctica, and India. So clearly, if you have a big glacier and sort of the, the grooves that that glacier is formed uh, all kind of line up across these five bodies of land, then there must be there must be connection between all five of those and so if we jump back over to our model let's see we have africa south america antarctica australia and india so we have uh, contact between all five of these now i don't know if this is exactly uh, the right orientation of these but the evidence suggests that there definitely is some contact all right let's look at another one Letter E, an alpine mountain range is found along the east coast of North America, Northern Africa, Greenland, and Europe. Okay, so North America, North Africa, Greenland, and Europe. Looks like there's sort of this uh, 
this plant connection, these alpine um, trees on these mountain ranges are, are probably uh, all connected together. So if we go back to the model, looks like we have North America uh, connected to the northern coast of Africa. Uh, Europe is in there as well. You know, I'm curious about Europe. If, um, if we were to rotate Europe a little bit, I wonder if it would uh, match up a little bit better. If we rotated Europe this way, I wonder if that makes any sense at all. Probably not. Let's let me see. Whoops. Let me select. Oh, there we go. Mm, yeah, not so sure about that one. Maybe we better rotate it back. <laughs> Uh, but clearly, if the mountain ranges are connected, then there must be some kind of um, uh, connection between those continents. So I think there is some rotation available uh, that we can rotate Europe, but uh, uh, we'll have to mess around and see. Oh, there we go. I think that's good. Move Europe back into place here. There we go. All right, we'll take a look at that um, after we review the, the rest of the clues. F, European plant fossils have been found in Canada and Greenland. So clearly Canada and Greenland uh, probably were in contact with one another. So let's see what we have here. So Canada's here, um, the northern part of North America. Greenland is here. So I think we, we might be okay here. I'm not sure if the Great Lakes, Greenland might fit in there somewhere. I think we're actually fine right there. I'm going to leave that there. Uh, and what else do we have here? We have, in 1965, geologist Edward Bullard used computers to match the underwater coastlines. Ah, then now that's interesting. So all, up until this point, we've been talking about um, the visible coastlines, the ones that are above water. Uh, uh, Edward Bullard used computers to match the underwater uh, coastlines, so kind of where the land ends under the water. And, and use that to match those up. So that's that's a very interesting approach. And it turns out um, it was a good approach and uh, it ended up finding, um, finding some pretty good uh, connectivity, some pretty good lines that matched up uh, doing this underwater approach. So that's kind of neat. All right, so a couple questions here. Um, why is the fact that similar fossils have been found on different continents considered evidence for the existence of Pangaea? And, you know, basically, you know, the answer to this one is, you know, it'd be really hard for land animals to survive a big swim across an open ocean. So even the best human swimmer, uh, that would be a really, really hard thing to do, uh, an unlikely thing to do. Um, so, so for animals that aren't necessarily good swimmers, finding their fossils on the east coast of South America and the west coast of Africa, and they're the same kinds of animals, gives us some idea that maybe the continents were connected or maybe there was some big land bridge between those two continents at one time. You know, that's another possibility. Uh, so another question might be, what might be the reason why the sea level outlines of the continents fit perfectly into a supercontinent underwater, but not at land level? So uh, like Edwin Bullard found, um, when you look at so, sort of South America, um, we see the coastlines defined here but in reality, the land mass of South America is much, much wider, much bigger. Same thing with North America and Africa and so on. We're just seeing the part of the continent that's above the water. But the part that's below the water, um, those parts tend to match up more cleanly than these parts. And so the question is, why? And the answer is because, think about it, um, over you know thousands and thousands of years, these coastlines, even as good as they match today, uh, erosion has happened. The coastlines have been changed. Uh, geological activity above water has had an effect. Uh, volcanoes have produced more land, visible land, uh, over over you know thousands and thousands of years. While underwater, um, although some changes have occurred, not nearly to the degree of the erosion and volcanic activity that's happened on the surface. So that's why the underwater coastlines fit um, much much more cleanly. All right, what about this one? In order for a theory to be accepted as the best explanation for a natural phenomenon, it must do the best job of explaining all evidence. Theories can sometimes be made stronger as new pieces of evidence are discovered. What do you think is the most convincing piece of evidence for the existence of Pangaea 
and why. So you might pause here, think about this question. Uh, I'll leave it posted here for you too. But uh, after you've had a moment to think through it and maybe you've jotted down your answer, come back to the video, play it again, uh, and I'll give you, you know, sort of my take on, on this question. And so, um, you know, my, my thing is rock layers are the best evidence because they are too large and heavy to be moved by wind to different places around the world. So when you see evidence of patterns that match up together across continents uh, in rock formations, chances are those continents were uh, connected at one point in time. Uh, because again, rocks, that th those are things that are really slow, slowly changing um, and, and hard to move. Uh, fossil evidence is good, but it's not as convincing since it's possible that animals could have moved between continents by a land bridge at some point in time. Um, but when you've got these large land mammals, or sorry, mammals, these land animals that match up, that don't necessarily appear to be good swimmers between Africa and South America, I think that's a pretty good bit of evidence too. And when you take all these bits of evidence and you sort of pull them together, um, it starts to, you start to form a picture and that's what we're doing here. All right, another question for you. The Himalayas are the tallest mountains in the world. Interestingly, fossils of seashells can be found in these mountains, which are far from the ocean. So how do seashell fossils get in, in some of the tallest mountains in the world? So think about that one. Pause the video and maybe come back when you're ready uh, to hear a possible explanation. Okay, so uh, the question was, how do seashell fossils appear in, in the mountains of uh, the Himalayans? You know, these are some of the tallest mountains in the world. How do, how do seashell fossils get there? And, and, a, and a reason that happens is because um, when the Indian uh, plate moved northward, the ocean floor bunched up to create the mountains uh, as India collided with Eurasia. So India um, kind of smacked into uh, Eurasia and those mountain chains were formed, the Himalayan mountains. Okay, so that's a, that's a possible reason why that's going on. Another question, based on the evidence we have to reconstruct the history of the Earth, seems that Earth is always changing. What, what evidence uh, do we have today that supports this idea? And so a hint here might be to think about natural disasters. And you can pause the video here, jot down a possible answer, and come back. And, and I'll provide a, a, a possible um, answer for you. All right, so uh, based on the evidence of, that we have to reconstruct the history of the Earth, um, basically earthquakes can occur when the plates move. So these big um, continental plates, they, they move apart, they move together, and it's always changing the shapes of the continents and their locations. And volcanoes also make new land that changes the shapes and elevation of the continents. But these continental plates that uh, interact together have a very big effect on what the continents look like, mountain chains that appear, um, you know, other geologic, geological court sort of features that you might see um, today. And those are probably different than they were, you know, thousands of years ago. Okay, and last question. In 100 years, do you think the continents will still be where they are today, or will they be in a different location? Why do you think this? All right, so based on what you've learned, um, and, and, and you've, you've seen sort of how these things fit together and how they've moved apart, uh, you know, the reality is uh, they're probably going to be in different locations because the continents, they're still moving apart. There's still geologic activity happen, happening. Um, well, well below the surface of, of, of these continents themselves are happening at the plates. And so uh, chances are these continents are definitely going to be um, uh, in different locations, which is pretty, pretty wild to think about, you know, North America being sort of somewhere else, even looking differently than it is today. Uh, that's the thing about nature. Nature is always changing. It's a dynamic system and the continents are, are no exception to that. So with that, that's the last uh, question I wanted to ask you. Uh, hopefully this made some sense for you and you have a better idea of, of Pangaea, uh, continental drift, and this idea that, that the landscape's always changing, sometimes so slowly that we can't uh, observe it, but we have evidence to suggest that it's definitely happening. Okay. All right. Please check out other videos at our YouTube channel, uh, TI Calculators, all one word. 
and hope you enjoyed this video and enjoy, enjoyed interacting with this, this puzzle of Pangea. Uh, and hopefully it also triggered maybe some uh, curiosity for you to, to find out more information about uh, the work of all the geologists, meteorologists, scientists in general, and piecing together Pangea. All right, with that, have a good day and talk to you next time. Thank you.